Hey, we have in our booth somebody that uh, <laughs> not unfamiliar territory for him, and not uh, and uh, not unfamiliar territory for us. It's Steve Harder, who is a he has that unique distinction of be, having been a, an All American in wrestling and an All American in football. Granted, it was the 1980s, the early 1980s, but that does not diminish that feat because there aren't too many student athletes who can claim to be all Americans and do sports. So, welcome, Steve. Welcome thank, back. Th- thank you, Harry. And probably one I'm most proud of is actually the Academic All American Award. So, uh, yeah, you know, and that's I, I, I figured out how to be a student when I got here, also. So, and we, and we want to talk about that just a little bit because so. you've got you've got a great story to tell. First of all, uh, that, uh, in addition to the story that you're going to tell. To, just to give you an idea of Steve and his dedication and his loyalty to Mountain Union, there are two buildings that uh, he gave the lead gift for. Uh, one is the the Wabel uh, Harder building, which is uh, in the uh, north end zone, which bears Steve's name. And he, he'll tell you a little bit about that, I'm sure, how that came to be. And then uh, the Wabel Harder, or, I mean, I'm sorry, the Colin Brander Harder building, which is... Uh, which was sort of an addition to the library, which is now larger than the library, uh, <laughs> and and w- was a technology classroom. Um, those are also that was also the result of Steve Harder and Elite Gift. So, so Steve, I know you've done a lot for Mountain Union, but tell us a little bit about how you got here. You're you're just well, a, you're just a farm boy from Carrollton. I was right? a big farm boy from Carrollton, Ohio. I was uneducated. I was a vocational kid. Learned to be a carpenter and. When I showed up at Mountain Union, I really thought I was just coming up here to play a fifth year of high school football and go home. So I was a pretty rough cut kid. And uh, the locker room story that uh, I, 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 first day I came in, I threw my stuff into the varsity locker room. And they said, well, the freshmen are over there. And I said, well, is this where the guys who start dress? And they kind of looked at me. And uh, nobody wanted to tangle. So we, we, we went about our business, started you know the second game of the season. And, had, you know, just enjoy this place so much. It's always good to be home. Um, you know, but it's uh, it's been an interesting life. Uh, didn't expect the things that happened to happen that allowed me as a young man to uh, make those gifts uh, for these you know these buildings. And uh, well, you know, Ken Wable, and and again the the, the Wable Harder building bears his name i know yeah. i've heard you speak on, I, I heard you speak well, at actually at his memorial service uh, and, and and other times and i know uh you have high regard for, oh, uh, for the uh, late ken wabel coach wabel changed my life i was a uh 3.0 student who thought i was doing great maybe a little less than 3.0 uh, coach wabel called me into his office in a sophomore year said the academic buildings tell me you're not doing as well in academics as you should be in as you do in the athletic fields and he basically told me, Steve, you want to be an All-American D3, I got to put you up. And I'm not going to put you up unless you're on the dean's list. So he did me a huge favor, forced me to uh, meet my potential in, on the academic side of the ledger, as well as the athletics. And also he taught me to be a citizen. Uh, Ken Wabel was a father figure I just didn't have as a kid. And I've heard so many great stories from friends and guys that I played ball with where, you know, Ken Wabel reached out to people and just basically saved their lives. And, and Ken Wabel was way ahead of his time on a lot of things uh, in the NCAA. Started uh, uh, Gary Frost as a quarterback in the OAC in 1975. Uh, you know, he was, he was a black athlete, so uh, Mountain Union's always uh, been a place where everybody gets educated, men, women, and uh, the African-American population, you know, when the school was first started. So it's a very inclusive place, it's always been that way. Uh, and, you know, this place has a mission. Our mission is always to educate the, those kids that are a lot of first-generation college kids like myself. Uh, the Washington Lee team has a different mission. They compete as a Stanford-type count, uh, a school. Uh, they, they compete against the Ivy Leagues, the kids they recruit. Um, my son happens to be a proud Washington Lee football player. So, you know, as a father, I'm obviously rooting and praying for him. And as a Mountain Union alumni, I'm, obviously I know how important this game in every playoff game is to Mountain Union. So, uh, but, uh, so yeah. I'm, I told the team last yesterday, I just, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say a prayer for no injuries and uh, let God handle it from there. So, <laughs> well, Adam Harder is your son, and and yeah. uh, again, I know you're uh, very proud of him. Uh, he's, yeah, he's he's, he's a, a very fine football player at a very fine Division three school. How is it that he decided to go to Washington and Lee? Well, it was interesting. He was being recruited by a lot of the um, uh, Ivy League schools, and uh, he went to Washington and Lee and fell in love with it. Um, 
he uh, immediately went uh, early decision, Washington Lee. He was getting calls from Penn and uh, Columbia and all these schools saying, well, where's your application? So, so he got his smarts from his mother? Was yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I did beat her in grade point the last two years of school, though. So that's my claim to fame with her. Not that he's competitive or anything. No, never, never. But uh, but uh, but he's a great kid. He, he's got a 385 or something, grade point average, uh, double major economics and uh, – and uh, studio arts. He's a tremendous artist, probably make a living in doing that, but he's going to go work for Bain Capital um, this summer. So, you know, the culmination of his college career today at Mount Union. Um, obviously, I'm very proud to see him out here. I uh, got some nice pictures of him uh, last night and today, and, uh, you know, couldn't be prouder as a father. Uh, he's a great teammate. He's selfless, um, much different than his father. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you were an old lineman. I, mean, I was an old lineman. I was, I was a nasty guy. Yeah, you know, you that's, that's who I was. So, yeah, but, don't forget the wrestling. Where you were, you were the you wrestled at heavyweight. Yeah, right? yeah, I wrestled at heavyweight. Uh, you know, I uh, left the school as the all-time uh, scoring leader in in points scored, pins scored. I, I don't know if I still have the season record or not for number of pins, but I set it back then at 17 pins in a season. Uh, but the, the, um, I was telling, I t talked to the wrestling team yesterday and, uh, you know, I said, you know, I, there's a wall over there I don't like to look at because it says I've placed three times second in the OAC <laughs> for three different reasons. Uh, but you know, uh, when I get up here, I tell these kids, I said, you know, y it's not about, uh, you know, winning or losing, you are going to lose in life. You're going to have days where, you know, you're going to lose. But how do you get up? How do you react after that? Is is what makes the difference. So, you know, I always enjoy getting up here, talking to the teams, talking to the kids, t going to the classrooms. Uh, you know, uh, I, I do things a little different. I tell them a little bit about myself, and I kind of open it up for questions. And sometimes the professors go, "Are you really going to do this?" I go, "Oh yeah, yeah." You know, these kids can ask some pretty interesting questions. I I, I like it. You know, we'll well, I, I can remember, you know, when, and I don't. I'm not sure that you do it now. Although it looks like maybe you could. You used to come back and actually wrestle. Yeah, the wrestlers. Yeah, right? I would yeah. come back unannounced. Uh, Coach Monty obviously knew who I was, and I'd put on a pair of. Uh, shoes and uh, go out there and wrestle with the boys and uh you know until my uh you know mid late 30s so i did lock up yesterday with the heavyweight i said who's the heavyweight um you know so we locked up and i squished him down a little bit and i think he <laughs> thought how in the hell is this old man 59 years old that farm boy strength doesn't go away you got it all your life so <laughs> that's really good but you know i, I you know i, I, I believe in you, taking care of yourself and thank you Harry and, and try to stay in shape and uh, and do those kind of things I think it's important for the body and the mind so hey, based on what you see you know you've you've been at it you've seen your son play football yeah. at the division three level what, yeah. what's the you know there, there's big different obviously artificial surface you played in the yeah the, I played uh, in the mud the, the old grass field <laughs> that got muddy all the time but but uh, what, what do you think about football just uh, college division three football in general and how it's changed uh, since the early 80s when you played you know I think um I think the, the level of football in the 80s, I think, is comparable. I think the game's changed a little bit. It's much more open in passing and things. And, you know, at Mount, we learned to pass the ball my junior and senior years. We, we weren't a big passing team right. earlier. Uh, but, you know, the passing game has just become such an integral part of every level of football. The, the, you know, flag football, not flag football, but uh, seven on seven. And, you know, these kids are out there working on that spring and – and summers, I, I think a lot of uh, the finesse of the game, uh, I think the physicality of the game has changed. Uh, I don't think it's a physical game as I played. Uh, you know, when I go watch practices, whether it's a Mountain Union practice or a Washington Lee practice, uh, you don't see uh, the physicality in the in on in the practice that, that we had. We hit it all the time. I mean, and if the coaches told us not to hit, we'd hit anyways. You know, and I I remember John Martin and I we were teasing, you know we were talking about this with Coach Karras the other night when I had dinner with him. Johnny Martin and I would hit on Fridays. <laughs> so, so supposed to be non-contact non -contact yeah, right, and right. the coaches be getting on our butts you know what, what do you hey settle down you know we'd, we'd go after each other on friday afternoon you know we you know so but it, you know i think that's the difference I'm, and i'm not certain that's a bad thing uh you know we've learned a lot about football uh, you know you know i believe the game needed to evolve 
I, I like the rules on um, no contact to the head. I'm, I may be a, a, um, a minority on that in, in uh, older guys my age, but I do think it's good for the game, and I think it's, uh, you know, we don't want a Teddy Roosevelt type thing where he's telling us we can't play football unless you change these rules. So, uh, right. so, so I, think it, I think it's evolved to the way the game should have evolved. You know, and, and just switching gears just a little bit, the, the, this this whole thing, uh, which is, you know, to your credit, the, the, the give back that you felt. I mean, you must well, have had a really strong feeling about Mount Union to do what you've done in terms of not just well, not just the financial support, but, but you know, you're, you're very visible. You're a visible alum. You yeah, okay. take care of other alums when they come down to the Houston area. That, that's well, something, something happened that well, caused I mean, that, they, right? Well, they, they, you know, it's, it's the Coach Webel, Coach Karras, Coach Montgomery. I mean, on the plaque for the rededication in the locker room, you know, I just hope my kids have that same kind of guidance and mentoring that I had by these gentlemen. It would be hard to understand for a normal person how poor I was. I mean, you know, the year I came here, my parents uh, made nine thousand dollars, and in ni- and in the eighties, nine thousand still wasn't a lot of money. It was it was poverty. Um, so you know, you're a vocational kid. You show up at a school. You end up graduating, you know, as an honor student and academic all American. Um, that's a huge transformation. And, and that transformation happened because these gentlemen cared more about me as a person than an athlete. And I, you know, and I still see that in the Mountain Union uh, coaching staff. And, and I want to do some things. I've got a couple black athletes that have graduated from Mountain Union that I'm tutoring. Uh, one's working for me directly, and one I just gave him a micro loan to start a company. Uh, and I want to do more of that. That's something for the next 10 years, 60 to 70. I got to get, have a reason to get up, Harry. <laughs> and uh, my legacy here is Mount Union. I told the boys yesterday, I said, you know, nobody's ever going to go visit a grave, you know, that has Steve Harder's name on it. But, you know, for the next 50 years, hopefully young men will be running in and out of this locker room and, and studying in the, uh, in the Cole Brand or Harder. And, you know, those kind of things. Uh, you know, setting up scholarships for kids. I'm a, we, we funded a scholarship, the Wavel Harder Scholarship, which will give scholarships each year uh, for kids who went to Coach Wavel's high school and my high school, Carrollton. Um, you know, so these are ways that, you know, I'm helping the next generation, hopefully of Steve Harders that, that are out there that get an opportunity that I had. And so, yeah, I love this place. It's, uh, it's my home. Um, they'll probably have to spread my ashes somewhere on campus. Um, but, you know, this is, you know, for me, a legacy. And, you know, I had an interesting conversation the other evening with uh, Coach Karras over dinner, and uh, we talked about uh, endowing a, uh, a chair, basically, for the head football coach and, and uh, staff that, uh, that are so good at Mountain Union. And uh, I think uh, – at the bottom line is uh, he's going to accept uh, the stadium being renamed, the, you know, Larry Kara Stadium, which is something that he deserves uh, as a guy who won 94% of his uh, college football games. Obviously, he's a college football Hall of Famer and uh, just the most humble human being I've ever met in my life. I just uh, I walked in the locker room in '93, and I'm congratulating the team and him for the first national championship and the first thing he says to me is not thank you he goes harder i hear you're on campus you know for a football game and you didn't come see me don't ever do that again and uh he sent the message and then the next thing he said is steve you know your play here and the kids you helped recruit and uh the things you did uh and your beliefs and we could be better really had as much to do with uh uh, winning this game as anybody in the locker room. Now, you know, uh, that was a pretty strong statement. I don't believe it. Uh, obviously, the grit and the grind of the boys on the field uh, was more important than what I did. But it was nice to be recognized, you know, in that moment of his life, winning his and first national championship. So uh, I just got tremendous respect for the man. They, most people don't know this, but Larry Karras was a uh, business uh major and uh, phys ed major, and he had uh, like a 3.6, 3.7 grade point average. So 
uh, Larry was not just a, a jock who played here. He, he really was a, a student athlete, and he expects the same thing of these boys on the field. We have a tremendous graduation rate, which, you know, uh, everybody wants to, you know, nibble at your heels, right? All this, you know, and nibble at your back, shoot arrows at your back. But I'd put Mount Union's graduation rate up against anybody in the nation. And uh, so these guys just don't come here to be um, – Athletes, they're they're expected to get educations and uh, yeah. Okay. Well, Steve, I'm getting. Uh, we were going to have to go, to, go, go again. We're going to well, have Harry, to go to I, a break, but I, I really appreciate your coming up and and uh, you know visiting with us. And when you come back on campus, I know it's a special thing for not only the campus but for you as well. So, thanks thanks for being with us, and we'll be back with second half of action here from Mount Union Stadium right after this.